Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, June 6, 2023. The Ministry of Local Government and Community Development will provide $10 million to the Portland Municipal Corporation to clean up the Musgrave Market, which was destroyed by fire recently. The funds will also be used to provide a temporary market for butchers in the parish, subject to approval of the location by the Public Health Department. Portfolio Minister Desmond McKenzie made the disclosure during the National Disaster Risk Management Council meeting on Friday. I want to assure the vendors in Port Antonio of the government's commitment to ensure that we restore as best as possible the market. We are working with a private sector company through the kind assistance of Minister Vaz to come up with a concept for the market that will allow much more space and allow vending to be done in an orderly fashion. Approximately 170 vendors have been negatively impacted by the fire, which destroyed a significant portion of the market. Minister McKenzie says the Musgrave market was insured and a partial report has been received from the Jamaica Fire Brigade. Meanwhile, investigations indicate that a fire at the Linston market on June 1 was the work of arsonists. The minister says government will not bow to pressure from any source and is urging those involved in setting fire to markets to stop. He reveals that over the last year and a half, 17 fires have occurred in markets across the country. This has cost the ministry more than $100 million in relief support and restoration, among other things. 90% of those who sell in the markets are females. And when we deliberately set fire to our public institutions, then it is cause for concern. There are approximately 35 markets across the country. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, says several disaster mitigation measures are being implemented by key ministries, departments and agencies of government. Acting Director General Richard Thompson gave an update on the country's state of readiness during last week's meeting of the National Disaster Risk Management Council. Among the outputs are the development of four hazard frameworks and the implementation of three hazard programs. ODPEM also supported a campaign dubbed Outer Road, targeting schools for the promotion of disaster risk management education. To advance disaster risk research, Mr. Thompson says a flood case study for Montego Bay was developed using forensic investigation methodology. This was in partnership with the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, UNDRR. The ODPEM continues to take the necessary steps and action to increase the country's resilience to disasters by building sound preparedness mitigation, response, recovery, and rehabilitation measures. ODPEM's Director General adds that the government is implementing a project to improve the country's overall emergency communication system. This is dubbed DCOM, short for Disaster Emergency Communication, and is being done in partnership with the Japan International Cooperation Agency. The ODPEM has advanced the implementation of this project. Thus far, we have seen the completion of two maintenance centers, that would be significant to the overall uh, network, one in Kingston and one in St. James. Overall, the network will have a total of 24 repeater sites and, and five siren sites, and we have thus completed the renovation and construction of, of five repeater hot sites. To ensure Jamaica is fully prepared for the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season, Assessments and system checks have been conducted on the current National Emergency Communication Network, emergency phones from telecom providers, and satellite communication. Upskilling of the labor force and expansion of the business process outsourcing BPO sector are two areas receiving priority attention as the government seeks to increase Jamaica's per capita income and GDP. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, says BPOs remain a vital asset for the labor force. This sector is estimated to contribute approximately 136 billion Jamaican dollars per year, which represents roughly 6% of Jamaica's GDP. This is where Jamaica has to go. And that's why upskilling and the BPO is, is such a wonderful a part of the business. 
Senator Hill was speaking at the recent official opening of 76 RHR Business Center on Red Hills Road, which houses one of the newest BPO facilities. He congratulated the local investors through which the BPO will provide 1,800 Jamaicans with direct employment. We need more investments like this from Jamaican families, from Jamaican families. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Entrepreneurs and companies that are able to do so. Investments in Jamaica must be done first by Jamaicans and cannot be expected to come only from foreign investors. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce is partnering with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, on a series of MSME business roadshows across the country. This is one of the ministry's latest initiatives to inform, educate and facilitate business for the micro, small and medium enterprise MSME sector. We're doing so in parallel with capacity building workshops being staged by the Jamaica Business Development uh, Corporation. Here's Valerie Vera, Mrs. Vera is right here with us, one of the key agents of, agency of the Ministry and the Ministry of Finance to increase the participation of MSME in public procurement and sensitizing them about the opportunities ob obtained in the set-asides regimes. Speaking at the launch recently, Senator Hill thanked the IDB for its partnership, which provides a grant of $250,000 U.S. dollars. The roadshow will kick off in Kingston, Mandeville, Montego Bay, and Ocho Rios. It will have several services in one location that's available for companies that are at different stages in their business life cycle. Two, it will bring much needed services to different key areas in Jamaica so entrepreneurs in the north, west, east and south will benefit. Inclusion. Three, the project aims to increase several pain points that MSMEs are facing including managing intellectual property, meeting and maintaining standards, internationalization and export and access to financing and several others. And finally, 20,493 new electors have been added to the National Voters List. The updated Voters List, which was published on May 31, now has a total of 2,017,921 registered voters. The newly registered voters are now eligible to cast their ballots in future elections or referenda. Once voter ID cards are ready for the electors added to the May 31 list, they will be able to collect them at the Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, office in the constituency where they are registered. The voters list is published twice per year, May 31 and November 30. The deadline to register for the next voters list is September 30, 2023. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.